This is Lawrence Krauss and Leonard Susskind, Susskind being one of the best theoretical physicists ever. No. No? Why is he somebody worth listening to then? Um, he's very, very smart, and he's one of the most important string theorists ever, and he writes exceptionally clear and correct introductory books. Okay. But he is not a leading physicist. But is somebody at the forefront of string theory? Absolutely. And he said, quote, I can tell you with absolute certainty, string theory is not the theory of the real world. I can tell you that 100%. My strong feelings are exactly that string theory is definitely not the theory of the real world. Is that taking it out of context? Is that him framing it somewhere else? Or does that encapsulate the fact that he thinks string theory is a dead end that doesn't describe the world? He's playing a game that I would, I would say is logomachy, an argument over words where he says that big S string theory is not the theory of the real world, which is the theory that was used to destroy all of its competitors, and that little s string theory exists I don't, th th this is basically the attempt uh, to take a school massacre and plead to a parking ticket. And no, uh, I think that the prosecution should decline the offer uh, from the good Dr. Suskin and say, no, 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 you have 40 years of the destruction of your colleagues to answer for. You've chosen to be, um, words fail me, an asshole uh, to just about everyone who came up with a competitor theory. And I've dealt with Leonard directly. He can be charming. He's a great raconteur. He's very brilliant. And he chooses to be a Wolfgang Pauli without achievement. He's taken a massive advance on a future career, which he will never have at age 85. So this is a person who wishes you to think of him as a leading physicist. He absolutely categorically, by the standards of physics known to our elders, is not. And Leonard Susskind is playing a game. He's saying, you saw Kill Bill. One of the great romantic scenes of all time is filmed between Beatrix Kiddo and Bill at the very end of the film. He's absolutely destroyed her life. He's killed her husband, fiance, the father of a child, she forced an abortion. She's been raped. Every indignity on earth has been suffered by this woman. And in the end, she wants to know, how could you do that to me? And what are his words? He says, I overreacted. And, and you see in the film, if I recall correctly, she leans forward and she says, you overreacted? Is that your explanation? Like, how can that be that my life has been turned upside down and your offering to me is I overreacted? So these people, and I, and I want to specifically call out the most aggressive of them, Lubos, Lubos Modal. Michio Kaku, Leonard Susskind, uh, Jeff Harvey, Michael Duff, uh, Andy Strominger, Kumran Vafa, have been on a tear that nothing else exists, destroying 40 years of competitors. And what does the bride say to Bill? He said, you and I have unfinished business. That's where we are right now. Your explanation to me Eric Weinstein is, <laughs> you overreacted, Leonard Susskind. You and I have in unfinished business. What happens next? Oh, that's going to get interesting. You're watching the beginning of the collapse. You're watching people running for the exits. We're not yet at the Lehman Brothers September 15 moment with AIG looming in the background. But right now, all of these guys are trying to plead to, oh, well, it's not string theory proper, we meant. Ha, 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 ha. We meant uh, something related to string theory. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's like that moment comically when somebody is caught red-handed. We're, we're in the middle of Shaggy's It Wasn't Me. It's theoretical retconning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's this beautiful offering that Hector makes to Achilles. We will give each other the honor of a proper burial. Achilles isn't interested. Let's do this thing. What does that mean? Well, hopefully somebody will come up with some money to hold a conference to get these people in the same room with the people they've tormented, whose careers they've ended, whose funds they've stolen, 
the stolen valor of actual achievements in real attempts to change physics. And wouldn't it be delicious and fun to see Michio Kaku, Ed Witten, Lenny Susskind, Michael Duff, Jeff Harvey, actually have to face people who know what they're talking about and have a discussion of what did we just do for 40 years? Did we, are, are we protecting the American public from restricted data? I have no idea. But I can tell you this, nobody in their right mind gives a startup 40 years of runway with never a call with investors, nor a, even a basic MVP, most you know, minimal viable product. We've been playing weekend at Biden's, and now we're also playing <laughs> weekend at Lenny's. <laughs> this is really funny. Who else would you want to uh, have a chat with the guys on the string theory side of the world? Well, I think uh, I think Peter Woit would be fun. He's got two new theories. Again, I don't agree with either of them. I have my own theory, and I I'm happy to fight with Peter. But Peter and I have been friends for all these years. Uh, I would love to have Nima Arkani Hamed and Ed Frankel and others uh, judge this, people who aren't really string theorists, who appreciate the best parts of string-inspired mathematics, let's say, or string-inspired mechanisms in physics. There is, there is the, the equations are not without interest or merit. It's the, the sociology should be hunted and removed with extreme prejudice. It's anti-science. So I don't know much or anything really about the inner workings of string theory, but Sabine Hossenfeld has been on the show. Brian Greene's been on the show. Uh, Sean Carroll's been on the show. Oh, let's get them. And, All of them. And I saw a tweet saying that somebody had been to a string theory convention and had asked the question, what is string theory? And the best string theorists on the planet came up with the answer, we kind of don't know what string theory is. And the other answer is whatever it is that we're doing, whatever it is that the string theory community is doing, even if they did something that had nothing to do with string theory, mm. they've now tried to say, how about this? And I, I don't know if you remember Maxwell Smart and Get Smart. So he was a comic version of um, James Bond an American bumbling secret agent who somehow solved cases and, 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 and uh, stopped terrible plots, but always by making accidents. And whenever he was caught, he would say, you know, I'm not worried because right now we're surrounded by the 3rd Battalion of <laughs> the Marine Division, such and such. Said, I don't believe that. Would you believe 12 police officers? No, Mr. Smart, I don't believe that either. Two Cub Scouts with slingshots. So, yeah. <laughs> This is a this is a very old pattern. Yeah. Is this too far gone for string theory now? Is it the mask is beginning to slip to the point where even Ed Dutton's going to have to eat his words within the next decade? They'll never eat their words. They'll just keep lying. Lying as a way of life. Lying to the public as I mean, I think Suskin somewhere else in this interview says something like we have to keep interest in physics high. Yeah. Look, science is fine. What we have now learned to call the science TM is an abomination. And one of the things people don't learn about from regular investing, retail investing, is what's called relative value trades. Uh, People say, oh, I, I'm bullish on tech. I'm staying out of the tech market. If you don't have the ability to go short, you don't know what a relative value trade is. Relative value trade says, uh, I think Microsoft uh, has the right idea over at OpenAI and Google's Gemini uh, has too much political encumberment. So I'm going to go long Microsoft and I'm going to fund it by going short Google. And therefore, whatever tech does, they'll both go up or both go down as a sec in, within the sector as the sector rises and falls, but you're betting on the Cross relative trade hedge kind exactly. of exactly. 
the right trade at the moment is go long science because it's been beaten up with its association with the science TM. So short the science TM, long science, uh, I think is the multi-billion dollar trade for smart countries at the moment. And you have to hunt out the science TM, which lives inside of the journals, lives inside of the funding agencies, lives inside of the departmental defense mechanisms, lives inside of the CIA, DITRA, all of these sorts of um, blob related um, agencies that get their paws into science. And by the way, I, I absolutely want the military to pick up the funding of basic research. We have to overturn something called the Mansfield Amendment, which a previous generation was obsessed by and modern academicians don't even know exists. That was when the military was funding basic research. They were our best friends. They stayed out of our hair. They were just paying a retainer so that they could call on us in times of emergency. And we stupidly gave away that funding source. And it's time to get it back. And it's probably time to allow physicists, mathematicians, biologists, intellectual property rights over basic research, not just technologies. Because what right now what we're doing is you're impoverishing the people who provide your safety and your prosperity. You're not letting them participate in the very society that they're funding. Is this indicative of a broader problem in all of science? Is physics the tip of the spear or is there anything even further down? Science used to be dominated by physics and mathematics in a certain sense after the atomic weapons proved their metal. And then the physicists showed that they could do things that nobody could imagine. For example, molecular biology is basically founded by physicists. World Wide Web comes out of CERN. Semiconductors come out of you know Stanford and the, the actual silicon that was in Silicon Valley. Um, so then it became a biology focused. So right now, when you say science, most people think biology rather than in previous years where most people thought the physicists who could do everything. Uh, we need hearings. And we need to basically rid the National Academy of Sciences, the National Science Foundation, the National Science Board, the National Research Council, um, the journals, Lancet, Nature, Science, publishing houses of all of the science. We've got to get rid of the science. The science is infecting us. We need we need lawyers, guns, and money. And it does seem like a fantastically asymmetric trade. You know, I think I, I hear this all the time in the world of trading. Look for limited downside and unlimited upside. I think we could make fantastic progress with within theoretical physics within five years, and I can promise you nobody's interested in funding it. What does it mean when academicians go after Harvard, MIT? Is it academicians, though? Yeah. It's, it, oh, it's trolls with PhDs. There's an entire community of um, trolls hunting people who dissent. Like I bet Sabina Hassenfelder has people who are just sitting around trying to destroy her. Yeah. And the same was true. It's, also, for it's, it's magnified, I think, not just by the dissent, but also by uh, the platform. Say more. Exposure. People get jealous of exposure. And I don't it, think it's that. Oh, I think that it is very, very obvious that if somebody gets attention and someone else feels that it's undeserving in one form or another, that guy's a phony and look at all of the whatever they get. I think there's some of that, but I think to think that that's what it is, is mistaken. Not entirely, but I think that it's a, a really big uh, leverage function on top of it. I don't think that's true. Right now we have a country with no president and we've moved on. And what's Taylor Swift doing? <laughs> <laughs> right? So my claim is, is that Anti-interesting, once you understand what anti-interesting is, like, ass assume that you actually wanted just to humiliate people. You'd give them a talk. If you can't play the piano, mm -hmm. um, and I want to humiliate you because you say you're a piano player. Away you go. I'll, I'll get you a grand piano and a stage and an audience. No, no, this isn't that. This is something really interesting. And because it's also, it's cheap, it's free. Why don't we find out whether somebody has something to say? I'm, I'm telling you right now, I believe I can explain where the particle spectrum comes from. 
I can explain the origin of, this is my claim, uh, the 16 particles that make up the first generation of matter, not coming from particle theory, but coming from general relativity. It, the most natural thing in the world is to say that's a really bold claim. There's no known explanation for the particle spectrum in terms of general relativity. What is that guy talking about? Let's get him in here. Let's get him on video. We'll humiliate him. This will be fun. We'll take away his audience. It never happens. Instead, what it is is that there's this constant sort of whisper campaign against somebody like Sabina. Oh, she's a popularizer. She's not serious. She's, mm -hmm. She doesn't know her stuff, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the, uh, they sold out of uh, pop, pop musicians. I like their old stuff. In other news, this episode is brought to you by AG1. In my quest for the best greens drink on the planet, I went through just about every single option. And after a year of testing, I found AG1. Three years later, I still use it every single day because it is so much more than just greens. It is the most comprehensive, highly tested and rigorously formulated supplement I've ever found. With one single scoop of AG1, you're replacing multiple health supplements like multivitamins, digestive aids, immune supports, and more. It is NSF certified, meaning that even Olympic athletes can use it. There is a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you've heard about AG1, you're thinking about trying it, you can buy it completely risk free. And if you do not like it, they will give you your money back. Plus, they ship internationally. Right now, you can get a year's free supply, vitamin D3 and K2, five free AG1 travel packs, and that 90-day money-back guarantee by going to the link in the description below or heading to drinkag1.com slash modernwisdom. That's all of this. Drinkag1.com slash modernwisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Eric, you can watch the entire episode in all its glory right now. Go on.